God not only knows what you and I are going to do, God knows what God, uh, God's self is always going to do. That, yeah. that, that, sounds, that sounds circular. Oh, not at all. Welcome to Closer to Truth, where we explore deep questions of existence, including arguments for and against the existence of God, and if there were a God, what might follow. Closer to Truth promotes no privileged position. Rather, we seek precision and clarity in diverse, even conflicting ideas. We do not mind challenging current belief. Today, I am speaking with William Lane Craig about his philosophical theology research projects over the course of his career. Here, the relationship between God and time, one of our favorite topics. Even if one does not believe that God exists, still seeing the relationship between God and time helps probe the nature of time itself. Bill has authored or edited over 30 books, including Time and Eternity, Exploring God's Relationship with Time. Bill was ranked by AcademicInfluence.com as the 10th most influential philosopher and the third most influential theologian in the world. Bill, I look forward very much to talking about God and time. Let's start with your conclusion. Put it on the table. Is God temporal in time without beginning or end, or is God timeless, not in time, not subject to time's constraints? My final conclusion, Robert, is that God is timeless without creation and in time since the moment of creation. That is a, a, a very original and remarkable and controversial idea that uh, just uh, begs for lots of follow-up questions. Uh, my first would be, um, is, was that moment of transition from timeless uh, to in time uh, uh, irreversible and irrevocable? Uh, you know, it seems to me that it is irreversible. Um, the fact that time had a beginning makes one naturally wonder, could time have an end? And it seems to me that time could not have an end once it began to exist, because it would always be true in the future that time once existed. <laughs> the time did exist, and that's a temporal relation. So it seems to me that it's irreversible once time comes into being. Uh, time will exist forever. And that uh, brings up the prior question to how could time begin in a in an environment that had no time. Um, I know there's a differential between metaphysical time and, and clock-based time, but still it, it seems uh, that transition point is, is, is a very strange one because prior to that, um, for all eternity in some timeless sense, there was the, the possibility or the certainty that time would eventually exist, eventually being a bad term. Yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> your, your explanation there was loaded with all kinds of temporal words, Robert, like prior well, I know, I know. and therefore I cannot be correct. Philosophically, that would be incoherent. I think what we want to say is that something begins to exist at a moment of time T. If it exists at T, and um, there is no time prior to T at which T, at which the thing exists. And in that sense, time began to exist. There is a first moment of time, and there is no prior moment at which time existed. And so it is an absolute beginning um, that happens at that first moment of time. God would have known, in some sense, from all eternity, that that would occur? Well, in a, only in a tenseless sense. I would think we could say that God existing timelessly without the world knows that time begins 
in a tenseless sense, at t equals zero. But he would not have the tensed belief, I will create time, or time will come to exist in 10 trillion years, because there isn't any time. It, it is simply a timeless state in which there can be tenseless truths, but there could not be tensed truths or future tense truths. Are there, are there tenseless sequence of events? I think we can speak of events in a tenseless idiom. So, for example, I can say Christopher Columbus discovers America in 1492. The United States lands men on the moon in 1968. Those are all tenseless statements about events in time. So we can talk about events in time tenselessly, but I don't think that time itself is tenseless. My own view is that the difference between past, present, and future is a real and objective difference, and that temporal becoming is real and objective. Things really do come into being and go out of being. What was your initial motivation to commit years of research to the relationship between God and time? What, what's at stake theologically and philosophically? Well, personally, after I finished my work in philosophy at the University of Birmingham, I decided to tackle as a long-range research project for my philosophical career the coherence of theism, which is a philosophical analysis of the attributes of God. Well, it turned out that this was biting off a lot more than I could chew. I started off with divine omniscience and spent seven years on that. And then I decided to tackle divine eternity next because the issue of divine omniscience raised a lot of questions about God's knowledge of the future and the nature of time. And so I spent the next 11 years working full time on the doctrine of divine eternity. Uh, and I think it is probably one of the most difficult and fascinating metaphysical uh, subjects a person can, can deal with. I think it was Max Black, the philosopher who said, apart from God, there is no philosophical subject more difficult than the subject of time. And you try to put time and God together, and you've got something you can think about for a lifetime. And it's a very deep probe of both God and time and to, to put them together. And so we've said on Closer to Truth that even if you don't believe in God or not interested in time, by putting them together, you really explore the richness of what each is in its own capacity. Is there any implications uh, in, the, in the Abrahamic religion, certainly Christianity, the future life of, of, of all humans has the great potential and the hope of of being with God in an afterlife in some eternal sense that you wouldn't die. And is, is there any um, uh, consequence of the research you've done on God's eternity that would have reflections on what we hope to expect for ourselves? I, I don't think so, because even if God is atemporal, even if God is timeless, we nevertheless are temporal creatures. Uh, we are time-bound, and therefore for the um, Judeo-Christian tradition, the idea of eternal life is not a timeless, changeless existence like an ice statue or a mannequin. It is a temporal, dynamic existence. Uh, the Bible calls it everlasting life. And so it's a very different uh, picture of immortality uh, than was held in Greek philosophy, where you had the sort of timeless existence of the soul um, in the afterlife. Here, in Jewish Christian belief, you have the resurrection of the body, and thus a dynamic, uh, temporal, embodied existence in the eternal state. When you started your work uh, on God and time, uh, what were your grounding assumptions? Uh, what beliefs, doctrinal commitments did you hold to be inviolate and sacrosanct 
it, it, that constrained the type of work you did or, or not? Only that God exists and that time is real, uh, not illusory. And I really wrestled with the question of how you put these together because initially I thought that God was timeless. And it was very difficult to make sense of the incarnation of Jesus, for example, if God is timeless, because there God seems to enter into human history, and there was a time before which he did, and a time after which he did. Um, and so I really wrestled and struggled with the idea of how do you put together um, God's involvement in the temporal universe with God's own uh, a temporal existence. And I came to this synthesis that in the absence of the universe, God existing alone without creation, he is timeless. But then with creation, from the moment of creation on, in virtue of his real relationship with a temporal world, God condescends to enter into time um, and therefore is temporal since that moment. In uh, all of the scriptures of the Abrahamic traditions, uh, uh, Hebrew Bible, New Testament, even the Quran, um, you have non-physical beings, angels uh, in, in different categories. Um, God seems to have created those spiritual beings, if you look consistently at the text, prior to the creation of the world, of, of the universe as, as we know it. Um, when God created the first thing that God created outside of God's own being. Was that the moment the time uh, uh, began? Yes. Uh, I don't think we know when God created the angelic realms. It could have been Genesis 1-1, when in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It could have been subsequent to it. It could have been before it. So we don't really know when these angelic realms were created, but given that they are temporal creatures as well, um, that would be the moment of creation and the beginning of time. Okay, if before creation, God's first creation, God was timeless, was in that state, was it possible for God to have not created the universe? I don't want to use the, the word decided. Uh, it has every word you use has temporal connotations to it. But was that a possibility? Did yes. God have the option not to create? And yes. if I so, yeah. creation is a free act of God, and therefore there are possible worlds in which God alone exists and refrains from creating anything other than himself. Okay, so how does that happen in the prior state, in, in God's timeless state? How does that option occur? Well, it seems to me that God would exist with an eternal determination to create a temporal world, and he would then exercise his causal power and create a world, and time would spring into being as a concomitant of that causal act. When you use the term from eternity, God had that intention, how does that uh, cohere with that being a free act? If it oh. was all eternity, God was going to do that. Yeah, I don't see any incompatibility between something being timeless and something being free. It's free in that God is not constrained by anything outside himself. It's up to him. Uh, whether or not a created order exists. And the fact that this is an eternal or timeless intention um, does nothing to make it less free. Does it, um, it, it, it is possible that it could have been different, <clears throat> but, is, 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 but God never needs to address that difference, should I create or not create? Because it was always the case from eternity. I think I understand what you're asking, and I think what, what we want to say is that God's freely uh, choosing to do something does not entail a period of indecision 
prior to the choice. Rather, the choice can be timeless and yet free, and there is no prior period of indecision. And when you think about it, that's excluded not simply by God's timelessness, it's excluded by his omniscience, because he's always known what he's going to do. Um, and so his omniscience alone would preclude there being this period of indecision. So God not only knows what you and I are going to do, God knows what God, uh, God's self is always going to do. That, yeah. that, that, sounds, that sounds circular. Oh, not at all. Um, he, he has knowledge of all true propositions, right? That's what omniscience means. And so if it's true in the actual world that God creates the universe at t equals zero, then God must know that. And he would freely will that that happen. When God created the universe and entered into time, as, as, as you've said, uh, that decision was likely irreversible and irre irrevocable. Now, here, here's my, my, my kind of question, is that at that prior to that moment, God had never experienced time, and after that moment, God did experience time in some sense. Uh, we're making a very clean uh, division in, in, these two, in these two categories. So my question is, wasn't that a risky move? Because, and, and, and the analogy I use, hear me out, hear me out, is uh, the famous uh, colorblind neuroscientist Mary. Uh, 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 Frank Jackson's uh, famous uh, concept about, about the mind-body problem, where Mary knew every neurophysiological, quantum physics uh, analysis of color, but she was colorblind and, 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 co and couldn't see red. And did she learn something new when she finally was able, through some switch, see red that she didn't know by knowing everything? I, I, is that analogy applicable to God and time? I think so, and um, I would say that what Mary acquires is not new propositional knowledge. She doesn't learn new truths. She acquires uh, a sort of experiential non-propositional knowledge, what it's like to see red. And similarly, I think at the moment of creation, God would uh, see what it's like to exist temporally. And so there is a change, um, and I have no problem with that. I think that the changelessness of God concerns his essential attributes and nature, but I don't see any problem with God changing in incidental ways, like experiencing temporal passage. Uh, that, going that, that does not seem to me ex uh, uh, incidental. That seems to me fundamental. It may not be propositional in the classic sense, but experiential, in one sense, is more fundamental than propositional. Um, what I meant, though, the change in God is not an essential oh. change. It doesn't change his essence. It's, it's uh, an accidental property that God could or could not have. In other words, I think God's temporal status is not essential to God. It's essential that God be without beginning or end that he be permanent. But whether he is in time or timeless, I would say is a contingent property of God. You said it is likely that God cannot return to a timeless state. Um, do you say that in the sense of it being logically impossible? Yes. Okay, well, that, that's, a, that's as strong as you can get. <laughs> Okay, what has been the reactions to your startling conclusion that God was timeless before creation, but in time, ever after, on a permanent basis? I haven't won many converts, I think, to my view, um, but I think it is respected. And the, I think, initial tendency to dismiss it as co incoherent um, evaporates upon further reflection. And so I think it is taken very seriously by my colleagues in philosophical theology. Well, certainly I've enjoyed it very much. Uh, I, I really express my appreciation for, it's really an illuminating probe of both God 
and time, even if you wind up disagreeing with it. It's certainly been part of my philosophical theology education. We invite viewers to watch Closer to Truth videos with William Lane Craig at CloserToTruth.com and Closer to Truth YouTube channel. We'll be doing more with Bill. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing.